Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda Ellis. Today is Gemini full moon and that is important to note that because what I'm going to be doing is channeling a very famous Gemini, uh, Norma Jean, Marilyn Monroe and today is the day that is going to be the first introduction to her on my channel. Uh, we will be looking at a number of different things, uh, talking to her, asking some questions, but I'd also like to go over some of the basics um, because I hadn't realised, you know, how long ago it was that she actually was born and died. She died before I was born in 1962 and was born in 1926. So, She's one of those figures that we all know of, but I think it's very good to maybe refresh our memories in terms of who she was at core essence. And so one of the ways that I'm going to do that to introduce this video is I'm going to go over her numerology, uh, which is very revealing. And then we also in this video are going to be looking at, sorry, I made some notes, her star seed origins. Uh, we're going to be looking at ways that you can connect to her, ways that she has given me for you to connect with her. We are going to obviously be having some messages from her. And I think it would also be interesting to ask her a little bit about had she lived, how she would have imagined herself developing and thoughts with regards to um, present day life as well. Also touching on some of her past contemporaries, um, I have channeled a few Hollywood stars of old before. In the Heart Squad, for example, we have David Niven, which I found fascinating. Um, also, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Audrey Hepburn, uh, I've channeled her as well. And one of the things about Marilyn is whatever your gender or sex. She's very much about helping you to feel good about yourself, bringing out, seeing your beauty. And this very much ties into her Venusian, Venusian uh, starseed quality, which is about beauty, but it's also about seeing beauty in all things. And in fact, the photograph that I've I'm looking at uh, in particular on my desk is this one. I might put it up as the uh, thumbnail or I might not. We'll see how this video progresses. But I was really taken by this particular photograph of her. And what it does is it shows her just looking at a um, flower. I thought it was a rose, but it's just a very simple flower, but very much being captivated by the beauty of that particular moment. Um, I was very flattered, I have to say, that when I was getting ready to do this video today, she's very chatty. She's uh, one of these girlfriends or sisters that we all need probably more than we realise we do. And she said to me, you remind me of Rita. <laughs> and I said, Rita? And she said, Rita Hayworth. And I thought, wow, well, that is a compliment. So, uh, but she was bringing in the energy of Rita Hayworth. And I think it's just because of my red hair. I'm quite stat statuesque. I don't know whether Rita Hayworth was or not, but um, that's what she was showing me, a statuesque energy, big red hair, and of course, a sparkly dress, which is what she asked me to wear for this video. But the other thing I love about her energy is I'm sitting here in a sparkly dress, but I've also got my slippers on, and that's very Marilyn as well. So it's sort of the energy of comfort and glamour combined. But of course, she was so much more than just the glamour. Very much would also like to uh, talk a little bit about her intellect, her deep thinking, her love of poetry, etc. So we'll do all that when we bring her in. But let's start then, shall we, with her numerology, because I do think that just gives a good introduction to what she was all about at Soul Essence when she incarnated into Mother Earth uh, at, on the 1st of June, 1926. So um, I'm not going to go over how you do numerology. I might do that in another video. Um, but this is uh, just tied into a method that I've learned over the years. So here we go. So she was born, th this is what strikes me about her. She was born 1st of June, 1926. She died 
the 5th of August 1962. It's really interesting to me that the date that the year that she was born and the year that she died, the digits are just reversed. So 26 and 62, it's just like a reversal of the numbers. It says to me that whatever you think about the way that she lived her life, the nature of her death. Some people may be feeling as though it had been cut short, whether you believe she was murdered or not. Um, I might go into in this video, I, I probably won't, I'll probably do that separately. But really what I'm seeing is a full circle, a life that was lived to the end in the way that it was meant to. It was a full circle. So... That's nice to see that she came to do what she was meant to do. She did it and then she exited. Uh, so, yeah, that 26 and 62 are mirrors. But if we actually look at her core numerology, her soul numerology, what we do is we take the number one, which was the date of her birth. So we look at number one. We then add up the digits of one, six and one, nine and two and six. And we get to um, seven. Well, actually, 1, 25 and 7 are her numbers in terms of numerology. Now, the energy of number 1 is linked into the sun. It is the leader. Uh, it is the person who, which is what she was, as bright as the sun, uh, dazzling light, uh, hard to ignore, hard to hide that light. And the energy of of the sun is also very much linked into, as I say, the energy of leadership, a born leader. And that number one energy is really interesting. It's with her whether she called herself Norma Jean or whether she called herself Marilyn Monroe. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the details in terms of how you do a numerology of a name itself, but you can. And I've worked it out. And Marilyn Monroe basically comes to a number 10 energy. One and zero make one. Norma Jean also comes to a 10 energy, one and zero make one. So all the way through her energy field is this energy of one, uh, born leader. And as I say, as bright as the sun, so dazzling that almost like you can't look at it. So beautiful, beautiful energy. Number 25, if we go back to 25, which is derived from the numbers of in terms of when she was born, the date she was born, the month she was born and the year she was born. It all adds up to 25. Uh, that is linked into um, a colour energy uh, via the colour mirror system, which is called analysis and discrimination. And that it's very much the colours of the scientist. It's the colours of somebody who is uh, has got a very strong, rational mind. And this, you see, is the side of her that many people didn't see. It does explain her attraction to some of the men in her life, in particular uh, those with high intelligence and IQ, uh, to match her intellect. So she was not the dumb blonde that she was portrayed as. She was much deeper than that, uh, and had a very high IQ and intellect, which is seen in that number 25 energy. So always sort of searching, going deeper. And I will just show you one of the books that my daughter's got, actually, uh, of Marilyn, which is called Fragments. Uh, some of you might have this book. Uh, it's poems, intimate notes and letters by Marilyn herself. But in this book, one of the lovely things about it is that you can first see her actual handwriting. So when I do start to channel her, I'm going to have my hand actually on the writing itself. It's a good way to form a bridge. Um, but you'll also see that the book is just full of poems, scribbled notes, um, thoughts, um, really trying to just get uh, what is in her mind down onto paper. This is the opposite of somebody who's just an airhead, a dumb blonde, who's just about the way she looks. Uh, she was also very much about the way she feels and the way she thinks. And you can see that in the 25 energy.
Uh, the last colour numerology uh, energy which I'd like to touch on today is the fact that two and five make seven. So she's actually uh, a life path seven. She's a, a number seven in terms of numerology. And that links into the year that we're in uh, as I'm channeling this. Uh, 2023 is a seven year. I've talked about this a lot. It links into the energy of Neptune, water, the sea, the subconscious, the depths. Very, very sensitive, very, very intuitive, um, very, whether it be clairvoyant, clairaudient, but having um, abilities and talents and gifts that go beyond what we can uh, necessarily understand at a very uh, 3D level. So the water energy is very much around her. And although I don't really want to talk about her death too much today because there's so much else to talk about, one thing she does keep showing me is a bathtub. Now, uh, I do know, I don't know a lot about her. I haven't, I have to be honest, I haven't watched many of her films. I haven't watched the documentaries that are uh, on at the moment deliberately because I like to come clean into a channeling. But I do know that there is a famous scene of her in a bathtub tub. Is it The Seven Year Itch? It's one of her famous films. But it's not that that I'm picking up. I'm picking up something much more sinister with a bathtub. And uh, my just intuitive feel, uh, I can't see anybody else saying this or suggesting this, so I might be wrong. But I'm having, I, I get the feeling that she may have been drowned. Um, and that could have been the nature of her death, which goes completely against um, all the narratives that are out there in terms of overdoses. And I, I know I'm contradicting what is out there as an official narrative, but I am just going to put it out there because I'm being given the bathtub for some reason. And it's just like there is this very hazy, sinister, feeling around the energy of the bathtub. If it's not that, it's the fact that that particular scene in that particular film made her feel uncomfortable. She didn't want to do it. Maybe she showed more skin than she wanted to. I really don't know, but I think it links to her death in some way. So um, I'm just going to put that out there because it links into this number seven energy, which is Neptune. Uh, because she also has the Neptune energy in the numbers, her death will always be a mystery. It will never be completely explained. Um, if there are files on it, secret files that one day might get released, I still feel, feel as though they will be redacted and you will never completely, will never be able to completely um, find the truth. Um, yes, we can ask her and I might do that, but put it this way, mediumship is something whereby... OK, this is what I'm being given to say to you. The first time you meet somebody in the street or the first time you meet somebody in life, what you don't do is you don't go up to them and just ask the most brutal questions. You uh, have an introductory phase and that's what this video is. So please just respect the way that I work and um, it's just how I am and what how I do these things. OK. So anything else to say about her numbers? She was obviously she obviously died when she was 36. Again, the energy of 36 is um, three and six add to nine. It's the completion of a cycle. She did complete the cycle. She did complete the life and the incarnation that she was meant to have as Norma Jean and Marilyn Monroe. However she died, whoever did it, uh, it, it, it was the natural completion of the cycle that she was meant to have on this earth. Okay, so that's her numerology done. Um, I also just would like to say something about how she's come in because uh, as I say it hasn't come in her energy hasn't come in via me necessarily calling her in it was my daughter Sophie who has been interested in her for a while who's really called her into my house and uh, with Sophie's permission I'll just say a few of the things that have happened but the stuff like dr her cut Marilyn coming to her in dreams but again, some of the ways that she's been presenting herself, and I've seen this as well, has been very everyday. You know, it's been more about the slippers than the glitzy, sparkly dress. 
Uh, I know Sophie had a dream where she, Marilyn was just helping me peg the washing out on the line. Okay, <laughs> literally, it's like the housewifey thing. And again, I think there was a side to her that was very like that. Although she was a Gemini, I feel as though there was a bit of Cancerian energy there as well. Um, the home body, seen more in the Norma Jean energy but also there in the Marilyn energy as well. So, um, yeah, her energy has been building for a while in my house. The, I also have just noticed and observed, because I'm able to channel spirit and I'm a medium, um, some of the people that I've channeled before and have been in my house and around me, it's hard to really put it into words, but it's as though their presence is more physical, even though they are spirit. You're very aware that they're actually there. You know, I remember channeling, for example, Alan Rickman, who I believe was also a 25-7 energy. And, uh, you know, he's literally, he was literally sitting over there in the chair, could see him in form. With Marilyn, it's much more ethereal. Uh, it's much lighter. And she said to me today that she gave me the analogy of the perfume that she used to wear, I believe, which was Chanel Number no. 5, or she's associated with Chanel Number no. 5. And that perfume is a bit like her spirit. It's very light. It's almost like you can't quite touch it. And that's interesting because she was somebody in her life that was touched a lot. Everyone was trying to touch her, pour at her, get to her, have sex with her, you know, very, like, very... Um, grasping, you know, trying to get to her energy, touch her skin. Whereas her actual spiritual energy is very light. It's very Prince-like. When I channeled Prince, I had the same feeling. It's like very ethereal, very sort of like they're here, but they're not here. They're here, but they're not here. They come in, they come out. And that perfume, I personally believe is like that. I've used it before and it's like after half an hour, I can't even smell it. And it's like, well, did I did I put it on? Did I not? Was it here? Was it not? Uh, she's She's got that sort of energy. It's very, very light. It's very wispy. It's a wispy, light energy. So trust that. And I'm telling you that because when you try and connect to her yourself, don't doubt that she's here with you. It's just that her frequency is very, very light. It's a very, very high vibration. Uh, in terms of a colour, it would be rose gold. She gives me the energy of rose gold. And you'll know if you work with colours and chakras and particularly the system that I talk about with Metatron, rose gold is a colour vibration that links to the highest out-of-body chakra, which is the stellar gateway. So in many ways, her energy is like that. It's like a, it's, it's a gateway energy, but it's a very, very high vibrational energy. And yes, she comes in on the rose gold frequency. Okay. I think before I get to her galactic starseed energy, which I'd like to talk to you about, I'd like to read two pieces of poetry because she was all about poetry. Um... One is a piece, very short, that I found in my diary, the Wee Moon Diary that I sometimes read from to you. And it's called When She Dances. It's by a lady called Jennifer Highland who wrote this in 2015. And it also has actually beside it a little, the picture with it, can you see that? Is of sort of like a goddess type energy. I don't know if it's going to come into focus. But you get, the, you get the idea. It's like a goddess energy, and that's called Dancing with the Wind. So Dancing with the Wind is a sculpture by Karen Russo, and this poem, When She Dances, by Jennifer Highland. Here we go. So I'm reading these to just try and help you connect to her energy before we actually formally bring her in, although she's already here. Okay. She is peacock feather and cockatiel. She is honey dripping from the comb. She is water buffalo planting her feet. She is the whole forest swaying. She is the spiral pulse of smoke. She is the wave that ambushes the shore. She is glacier thundering into the bay. She is the whole forest falling. She is the quiver deep in the frog's throat. 
She is pollen rising like mist. She is candle flame over water. And she is the whole forest singing. I think that's really beautiful. I think that really captures her energy. The second poem is actually a song. Of course, it's Candle in the Wind. But I'm going to read you the lyrics to that when we get to the part of this video, which is about you connecting with her. Right. Her galactic starseed energy. Very much like Princess Diana. Princess Diana was the first member of the Heart Squad. She founded the Heart Squad. She got me into channeling and being doing this work as a medium. But Princess Diana, I have always said and been told, comes from the planet Venus. Okay, so the planet Venus is the planet of love, harmony, relationships, loving self, learning to love self. It comes in on the pink ray. And Marilyn is also from that place. That's what I'm picking up. Very Venusian in nature. Um, I'm also now seeing the volcano. So um, hidden, hidden depths of heat and lava. And this is also sexual as well. Um, obviously, she was a, a sex symbol. She um, was very desired. It's like this carnal energy that many um, people had towards her, wanting to devour her almost. But it's from this primal uh, sexual energy. And I'm just being shown the volcano. I don't know whether she fully appreciated it when she was alive. I f she's saying to me she misunderstood it. She didn't understand how to channel it. Um, she became vulnerable because she allowed herself to expose maybe more of it publicly than she could have done. She's shown me the energy of her husband's now. And actually, you see, at heart, what she's showing me is a very a uh, simple country girl, um, to put it in an American term, a very simple country girl where with traditional values, which are very much at odds with the Hollywood values that she says exploited her. Although I allowed myself to be exploited, I am no victim, she says. But yeah, she's showing me this side of her, which is just very country girl, um, domestic, domestic goddess housewife type energy. Very happy pegging out the washing on the line, cooking the meals, um, all of that. Um, but equally, with regards to sexuality, keeping it for your man, basically, keeping it for your man, having that hotness within um, a, a private sacred space within the bedroom, basically. But yet, She's showing me herself now wheeled out on a bed. Um, and actually, this is... She's showing me two things. Number one, I don't know if there's a film where she's wheeled out on a bed, but it's a bit like... It's a bit like... I'm, I'm getting the energy of Madonna here as well. Not Although Madonna is a totally different energy and I don't want to bring that energy in. But it's more that... Um, I'm seeing that video I think Madonna did to Vogue or I think she is on a bed or something. Whether that came from a Marilyn film or not, I don't know. But I'm seeing that. But I'm also sh being shown her being wheeled out on a bed after she had died. Um, and it's then like the volcano had, had become extinct. It's as though they had uh, dulled the flames, dulled the fire, dulled the passion, deadened her um, to the point where life was unlivable. Doesn't mean she took her own life, but uh, can I just say at an outset here, I just want to put something in because many people might not have watched all my other videos that I've done with Heart Squad but I pick up a general trait with many of them. I would include um, George Michael. I would include Prince. I would include Michael Jackson. I would include uh, Elvis Presley. A lot of them had this energy where it looks as though um, either uh, Michael Hutchins as well, um, Chris Cornell, as though they either took their own life or they... Um, 
did something which exacerbated the end of their life, usually drugs. But I always call it, it's like a slow suicide because that behavior that had led to the over-medication um, of pills or tablets um, or the crushing of the spirit, basically, from big business, whether it be the entertainment industry, whether it's record companies, whether it's Hollywood, the crushing of the spirit leads these bright stars and, and suns like uh, Marilyn to rely and have to... Um, move to coping strategies and often it's drugs and pills so it, you know the unobserved person at the end of a life just says oh well yeah they were taking drugs that's what's killed them but it's why they were taking the drugs it's this crushing of the spirit that's why I call it slow slow suicide so actually who is to blame for that if blame is even the word is it the person that took the drugs or is it the people that gave the conditions whereby they had to do that, okay? So before you Prince fans come at me, I do know that, yes, his medication was messed with at the end, as was Michael's, of course. But anyway, let's not get into that. Let's get back to Marilyn. Uh, let's get back to Marilyn. Okay. Can't remember where I was now. But anyway, uh, we were talking about Venus. Let's get back to the Venus energy. Oh, the volcano. That's right. That's exactly what they do. That's what Hollywood does. That's what big business does. You have this big shining star, this volcano that is just that can light up the star, the light up the sky that, yes, can explode, but also that is majestic. It can release extraordinary creativity, whether that's music, acting, poetry, writing, changes the world, changes you know, the land is changed forever by what comes from the volcano, which is the life force, the primal life force itself. But that that energy, that fire energy is always put out in the end because it's threatening. In some way, it's threatening. So Marilyn was threatening in different ways to other members of the Heart Squad, but quite similar to Princess Diana, actually. It's this archetype which comes from Venus, which is of extraordinary depths of femininity, uh, beauty, goddess energy, divine goddess feminine energy. And the people that come in like Marilyn or Diana that hold it to such a high degree, it's very hard to hold that energy and to maintain your sanity and to keep your life, basically. Um, it doesn't mean that will always be the case. But remember, Marilyn was born in the 1920s, was it? Uh, Diana, obviously, later. But yeah, let's talk about the energy of Venus then, where Marilyn comes from, Diana too. Uh, firstly, Marilyn's giving me some traits. So we've got the we've got the volcano. Whether there are dormant volcanoes on Venus, I would love to know that. I don't know whether that's true or not, but that's what I'm being shown. Uh, certainly being shown craters. But there, um, so that's the first thing. This this extraordinary fire energy um, also can be hot tempered as well. There can be a hot temper there. But in terms of physical traits, there's usually these eyes. The eyes are a clue to the Venus heritage. Very open eyes, very big open eyes. I'm being shown the energy of a deer. You know the deer when it's caught in the... Um, headlights. They have just these beautiful open eyes. The energy of openness is very Venusian, um, putting it all out on the table. Okay. Wearing your heart on your sleeve because they are heart-centered people. Uh, Marilyn was a heart-centered person. She put it all out there um, at, to her own detriment and to her own cost. Um, also, I'm picking up something with the noses with Venusians. There seems to be this, I'm being shown, was it like bewitched where she used to tw twitch a little nose at the end or the nose? There's something about the nose just being quite cute or um, it's got a certain shape or there's something about the nose. It doesn't have to be cute, but there's a prominent nose for whatever reason, whether it's slightly upturned, whether it's just got a little bobble on the end, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but these, 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 um, star seeds from Venus are usually always beautiful, um, male or female. There's beauty there. 
Um, the other one that I feel is very Ven Venusian that I've done in terms of Heart Squad is uh, I keep being shown Tim Berglin, uh, Avicii. I feel like he was as well. Again, same eyes. I'm seeing the eyes and the nose. Okay, so I want to show you a couple of cards that I drew off camera. One, just confirmation of the, the Venus energy, which I already knew, but I knew this card was going to come up. Uh, Lady Venus. So Lady Venus came through for Marilyn. But the other one that I find blows my mind, but it's just so beautiful. Before I show it to you, it's the energy of, I believe that Marilyn, and remember I'm recording this on Gemini full moon. Gemini is about the twins. It's the twins. Marilyn Monroe and Norma Jean, they are twin soul aspects of the same being. She was able to come and express both versions of herself in a very actualized way. I think if she had lived, you would have seen more of Norma Jean coming back, um, the country girl type energy. But obviously she didn't. But you see, this, this is what I need to show you. This card here. This is the Miriam. It's sacred vision. Now, whether or not you can see this very well, we also have the Vesica Pisces symbol in the uh, middle of them. Vesica Pisces, which is two circles overlapping to create this third energy. That is a symbol that you can connect to Marilyn with, okay? The Vesica Pisces symbol is absolutely the symbol to connect to Marilyn with. Uh, again, I'll talk about that a little bit uh, later when we talk about ways to connect to her and I sum it all up. But I want to read you what it says about the Miriam, okay? Because I feel that Norma Jean, Marilyn Monroe, same person, but it says the Miriam, which means the beloved, are twin flame angels who come as one. Can I just repeat that? They are twin flame energies, sorry, twin flame angels who come as one. They are mirror images of each other. They are the angels who appeared to Mary Magdalene in the tomb of Jesus after his passing. These angels spoke directly to Mary and helped her move beyond her grief so that she was able to commune with Jesus once more. Um, now, I don't want to get too much into the story of Jesus here with regards to this aspect, but I'm really interested in what it says here about twin flame and angels who come as one. So the twin flame concept generally is that we are um, there is a mirrored aspect of ourself out there. Um, so we look for that, we search for that, but we also have to find it within ourself first before we reunite or connect with it. What Marilyn seemed to have within her, she came in, even though she came into a very dysfunctional family uh, with pretty much a terrible upbringing, really, in, in terms of her mother being very mentally ill, often institutionalized, not knowing her father, lots of foster homes, was not an ideal upbringing. But she rose through that to become this icon that we're still talking about all these decades later, and she always will be talked about. That's what's so fascinating about my daughter finding her at age 17. I have never been really... Um, I feel embarrassed to say it in front of her energy, but that interested in Marilyn Monroe just because she had died before I was born. Her energy hadn't touched me. It's almost like she'd skipped my generation in terms of me, not saying all my generation, but she skipped me. But my daughter found her. Okay, this is what happens with great icons. They will always be refound. So why, what is the strength of this? And I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that she had got these... She was fully harmonized in terms of her twin flame angel aspect. She came as one. It's almost like she, as a soul, when she incarnated, she dropped down, but she dropped down as two people, not as a split fragmented soul that, you know, um, was ill. No, these were two complete 
aspects of her soul that she was able to show. Usually we can only show maybe one aspect. We can develop who we think we are as Amanda or uh, James or Alex or whoever else. But, but this is different. This is different. There really were two different people, but in one body. It's really fascinating. So if that resonates, just maybe tune into that a little bit deeper with her. Let me ask her now about that, actually, because it is really interesting, isn't it? So let me just use the... Mar I'm, I'm, we are going to make a Marilyn spray. OK, so those of you that follow my work, occasionally I'll do a spray for dedicated to particular people. And uh, there's a prototype here with no label. It will have this beautiful painting on it, though, which is done by one of my followers called Mary Johnson. Uh, she runs a Facebook page called Art by Mary. I'll put the links below. She sent me this beautiful, I think it's charcoal, uh, drawing of Marilyn. I don't know, maybe two years ago, could even be longer. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely stunning. So that's going to be on the label of this bottle. But this is a way to also connect to Marilyn. So I'm going to use this now. I'm going to ask Marilyn about these two sides of her being, Norma Jean and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, I loved playing both parts, she says. I loved playing both parts because I knew them so well. Uh, they were both complete, actualized aspects of myself, as you have just said, Amanda. I loved playing both parts. I loved Norma Jean and all that she had gone through, all that she had survived, all that she had fought to move away from, to learn from. Uh, I loved her innocence. I loved her purity. I loved her toughness. I loved her light. But I also enjoyed playing and moving into the shoes of Marilyn, uh, which was very much an aspect of me also. She's saying to me that it wasn't contrived, that yes, she's showing me now a whole line of men in suits, who I suppose we can assume are the movers and shakers of the day. The Hollywood, the Holly, interesting, Hollywood, the Hollywood, I think she had a sense of humor, the Hollywood, she wanted me to say the Hollywood, she's wanting me to say Hollywood, she's saying the Hollywood uh, people in the shadows who absolutely felt as though they created me, but I created myself is what she's saying. Um, I allowed them to do that very strongly coming through that I was not a victim. I was never a victim. Uh, I, I manipulated them is what she's saying. I manipulated them. What do you mean by that? I mean, that I got from it what I needed to get as fulfilling my mission as Marilyn Monroe. Um, I acquired the fame. I acquired the glitter. I acquired the accolades. I acquired the husband. She's got a bit of a sense of humor because she's saying it slightly tongue in cheek. I got to meet the people that I wanted to meet. She's talking, um, she showed me the queen. I remember she met the queen. Um, I, I mixed in high circles. I had the lifestyle that I'd yearned for uh, since being a little girl, growing up with little. Uh, I, I got what I wished to get. So who was using who? Um, there's an energy coming through here today with her of screw them. Um, I it's quite it's this fire energy I'm picking up with her. It's it's like she's very adamant that she was not used, that it appears as though she was, but she's taking me up to soul contract level and reminding us that the soul comes in to learn and experience what it wants to learn and experience. And she wanted that lifetime as Marilyn Monroe. She wanted to have her name up in lights. She wanted to be remembered. Uh, she wanted to be both famous and infamous, is what she's saying. Um, infamous, infamous more than famous. Um, 
she absolutely, even though she consciously uh, wouldn't have used this language in her lifetime, because she was in the 1920s when she was born, but I'm being shown T-shirts and I'm being shown um, her face on T-shirts, her face on mugs. She's, showing, she's saying, show them the doll. Okay, so the, the doll, the, Sophie has told me I can show you this. This is a collector's item doll that I bought Sophie last Christmas, which is one of her prized possessions. It's a Marilyn Monroe Barbie. And it's uh, she's wearing the red sparkly dress and it says gentlemen prefer bon blondes. And she's saying she's saying how how cute is that? <laughs> she's, she, she, she loves it. She's like gone into this little girly mode. She's saying how amazing is it that th things like that are are still sought after, that I'm still remembered. Uh, she says, I'm damn proud of the achievements that I made when I was Marilyn. I'm proud of the um, uh, the walls that I was able to break down. Now, before I came on camera, I was just setting up here. I was doing a little test and I'm sitting as I was now. And this painting just fell. It just fell with nobody behind it or anything. And in the moment that it fell, I knew she was saying to me, I smashed through some glass ceilings. I broke down some walls. I broke down some stereotypes. But she's saying, but they tried to stereotype me. But she's very much coming forward here now as saying, I want to help you to smash through glass ceilings, to break down barriers. But it's also to break down the barriers within yourself. And she's showing, um, she's showing me or pointing this, this card out again that you have within yourself uh, different aspects of your being, both of which are completely valid. And she's saying in most people, um, one is more accentuated or highlighted or praised or valued over the other. But she's saying never forget this other side of who you are as well, um, that there is another aspect that came in when you incarnated, another twin aspect of yourself that also wanted to have its day, that wanted to show uh, who it, who, what it can do, uh, to play, to explore, to adventure. Um, so she's very much about not wanting to be stuck in the box. She's wanted to get the doll out of the box. <laughs> I can't do that, Marilyn. Sophie would not be happy with me. She says, I know. She's laughing. She's got a really lovely, light-hearted chuckle, um, uh, hu she's got humor. She's definitely got humor. Um, and she's now showing me, you know, my daughter's 17. She's not a child, but this is, this is, this is quite an expensive doll. This collector's item Barbies. If you do it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, that's never going to be out of the box. It's a prized possession, but she's showing me now she wants to get down on the floor and play with the doll. You know, that's what it's about. If she'd had children, um, she's showing me as a mother, uh, wanting to get down on the floor and play with her children. Um, there is an element of regret that that didn't happen. I believe that if she had lived longer, she would have loved to have had children. I very much pick up the empress energy with her, a very strong mothering energy. If she comes back and if she incarnates, she sh she, she's saying she would come back as a mother to a huge brood of children. Um, and she's saying she would be in her bathrobe. Her, um, she's showing me herself with her hair all over the place like this. And she's just enjoying the moment of being on the floor with the kids, playing with whatever it is, the jigsaws, the dolls, all of that. Um, whether it's the fact that she wasn't, she didn't, experience much of that in her own life or it's more also she's saying that she did play as a child but she was never it's as though there's a loneliness here there's definitely a loneliness energy that she would have been the one doing it on her own um she would have loved a mother or a parent or a guardian to have been on the floor with her so uh, there's a inner child wound here 
it resonates with me as well. My mother was never very good at getting on the floor and playing with me, but you know, I was not judging her. I, I probably hold that. I still hold that pattern as well. So uh, that's something she would like us as mothers to be able to embrace more, to be able to get down on the floor, to play with your children, to engage with them at the level they're at, whatever that means, whatever age they are. So as they grow, it won't be Lego that you're playing with. It will be other things, but to be interested in their world. Um, she's, she's definitely got an energy linked to children. She's shown me a huge love of ch for children. Uh, I'm picking up the energy of Princess Diana now as well. They're very, very similar in that respect, a real love of children. Um, now, I don't know whether she ever tried to have children or not, but I'm feeling as though she would have tried to have children. I don't know whether she had miscarriages or... Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm picking up children, children's energy with her, but also this childlike innocence that she had. She is the conundrum. She is the, um, she is the Pandora's box because she, as a woman, is able to embrace all of it, to be the femme fatale, to be the sex bomb, but equally to be the mum in no makeup, hair like this, first thing in the morning, making the porridge, feeding the goats. For some reason, I'm now wanting to take her out into nature, feeding animals. I'm seeing her with animals. Um, it's like, it's quite interesting because she's very, you know, I was explaining at the start that her energy is very wispy. It's in, it's out. It's like she's here with me, but she's so excited to be back here on earth, just in this moment talking to us, that she's doing something that somebody else did. Um, another spirit I had, uh, it, it, maybe it was Alan Rickman. No, was it Chris Cornell? Anyway, one of them. No, it was Kurt Cobain, I think. <laughs> It was like they wanting to go out. I live near the New Forest where the ponies are. I'm seeing like she wants to rush there and see that as well. But she also wants to be here with us now. Quite scatterbrained in many ways. That doesn't mean like airheaded. It just means somebody that's very full of uh, enthusiasm and interest for life. Wanting to see this, wanting to go there, wanting to do that. Wanting to speak to this person, wanting to pat that animal on the head. This is what Marilyn Monroe allowed her to do. It opened up the world to her. She says, I traveled. I met the most extraordinary people. I wore the most beautiful gowns. I got myself into various scrapes. I had the most extraordinary experiences. Uh, she said, my life off camera was actually far more eventful than the one on camera. So she's now showing me the scripts that she was given for many of the films that she graced and starred in. And she was a very good actress. She says, thank you very much. But equally, um, she's saying that her life off camera, well, there was, nobody could have written that script, she said. Nobody could have written that script but me. It's like there's a little thing at the end, but me. I was able to write the script. I was the person in charge of my destiny. I was the person in charge of who I married. I was the per you know, despite despite exterior um, appearances, she's saying. She's saying, you may very well get criticized because we've just said that. Um, she's saying, but I am telling you to say that, that I was the master of my own destiny, that I was not a victim. She, it's almost like she's saying, it pisses me off. <laughs> Um, it's like she, she's cussing a bit. It's like she, it, it irritates her when people just paint her as this fallen victim energy. And they just, she says they endlessly, it's like she's really getting all this off her chest. She's saying they just endlessly want to see me as this lifeless victim on the bed, you know, that life has just had its way with her. And, you know, what a terrible shame. She said, no, I rose from that moment. Uh, she said, my life was complete. I was meant to exit when I did. I wasn't meant to live to be an old woman. Um, now, have you ever lived to be an old woman? Because have you had previous lives where you've, you've, you've been old? Okay, so she's taking me to China. She's taking me, um, she's showing me a very old Chinese woman. Um, very wise old Chinese woman. Um, this woman has got um, a covering over her head. She's looking down at the ground. She's stooped. Um, but she's looking up at me now, and I can just see the eyes. I can still see the eyes. Uh, 
Now, I'm not quite sure whether this is a life that she's had or a life that she wishes to now have, but she's showing me the energy. It's definitely not an American culture. It's definitely from China or the Far East. I think it's China. Could be Tibet, but I think it's China. Uh, it's China. It, it's a woman in the fields and she's lived on the land. Her face is very lined, uh, very deep crevices on her face. Um, but she has this beautiful energy that still would light up a room because that life force energy that we saw as Marilyn Monroe and Norma Jean is now in this older woman. And by older, I'm talking 80s, could even be older than that. And uh, so this could be a lifetime to come or it might be one from the past. Not quite sure. She's, is it past or is it future? I think it's past. I think it's past. Um, I'm hearing the word peasant. Okay. So um, somebody with very little money. Yeah, it's past. She's saying, okay, it's for someone with very little money um, who lived on the land very seasoned, very weathered, uh, very stooped over, having to keep working in old age because that's what you do. You honour the land until you die. Uh, the land is who you are. And in that lifetime, it still feels as though she didn't have many children. Uh, she didn't have any children. She's correcting me. She says, I did have a child, but the, child, the children didn't survive. So she's showing me that she had children, but they didn't survive. She was this old peasant living off the land who... Um, but again, there's this strength, there's this resilience. She's saying, don't paint me as a victim. I wasn't a victim in that lifetime. I was a survivor. I was absolutely a survivor. Um, and one day she says, I just lay down and I died. And I chose my moment and I chose my time. And she said, but it was a natural death. She was so in sync with the rhythms and the earth and her own body and her own life force that she knew when her life force was draining. So she just lay down to allow it to move to the next dimension. Uh, so she's showing me that. And she's saying that lifetime taught me a great deal. Um, but there's, there's an energy of loneliness that seems to come through her lifetimes because there was a loneliness with this old woman um, who definitely was on her own at the end. I don't see any partner around her. I don't even see many people around her. I see her in a very remote part of China, this little bit of land and, you know, survival, survivalist type energy, you know, cooking what you produce. And if you don't produce anything, you starve very, very tough, hard life. So she's saying, do you not think that after that lifetime, I wouldn't have jumped at the chance to come in and be Marilyn? <laughs> to have all that, uh, to, to, to be feted, uh, to have money, um, to have nice things, uh, to, to just experience the complete opposite of what I did in that lifetime. So She's saying, and it was such fun. She's saying, can you see now why I'm so insistent that you don't paint me as this victim? I had fun as Marilyn. Uh, I, you know, she says, if people could only see and understand the other lifetimes that they've led and how we consciously often will choose something that is either a complete opposite to what we've had before or is the next step in our learning and could just be more lighthearted about the time that we have here on earth, which is very, very short lived, whether you live to be 90 or whether you live to be nine. It's a short life. So enjoy it, embrace it, um, adventure into it, explore the aspects of your soul that wish to come and play and be you in this lifetime. She said, I was lucky to get to play two great roles. And I'm not talking about my films. I'm talking about Norma Jean and I'm talking about Marilyn. And I loved them both. Uh, she's showing me like they're like coats that she put on their suits that she put on and she came down here and she embodied them both and 100% completed both of them. Um, so that's, that's just a beautiful thing. Okay. Uh, right. Um, 
Right, where do we go from here, Marilyn? Let me see what else she wants to uh, show us today. How are we doing for time? 54 minutes. Marilyn Monroe. Norma Jean. Let's step into the energy then of Norma Jean a little bit more. Norma Jean. Pure hearted. These are Marilyn, Marilyn's words. Pure hearted. Innocent. Of the earth. She's saying Norma Jean's energy was closer to the old Chinese woman <laughs> than Marilyn. Uh, you could see more of the seeds of it. It's as though uh, she's showing me here the old woman's pockets full of seeds of grain. And she's now showing me Norma Jean. And Norma Jean is wearing like this cardigan. And in the cardigan, it's like she's putting her hands down and there's these seeds of grain. And she's like feeding the chickens. She's like feeding the chickens or something. I'm being shown chickens, okay? <laughs> um, definitely rural energy there. And being quite content. But then I'm being shown scattering the seeds, okay, for the chickens. But then it's like there was this moment in Norma Jean's life where she wanted to scatter the seeds further. She wanted to go beyond the picket fence, you know. Uh, she wanted to see what was beyond the gate uh, because she held this gateway energy within her soul. She, she is a gateway energy. She wanted to see what was beyond, beyond her upbringing, uh, beyond what people expected of her. She wanted to go beyond and see beyond. Uh, and so Marilyn, I'm now just being shown Norma Jean. It's like she's standing in this sort of garden. Uh, I'm sure this is like symbolic, but I'm really feeling it very strongly. She's standing there. Uh, the sky is darkening around her and there's this beautiful gate and the gate is golden, okay? And the gate has just got all this glitter and glamour and lure. It's like the stars luring. What, what's the old expression about like being lured on streets of gold? But it's less about the materialistic things. I mean, she, she was, she enjoyed that, but she hasn't got a materialistic soul. It's more playing. It's like a child that's playing in a toy box. And it's like, oh, look, what's this trinket? What's this beautiful necklace? What's this lovely dress? Let's try this on. Uh, it's, it's that type of energy. It's not like a money grabbing, you know, I want it all and I want to build an empire. None of that. She said that was all Holly weird. That was their doing. You know, that was them wanting to create empires and money out of her. She said, I was just like this little girl playing in the toy box and having great fun. Um, so there's that that's coming through very strongly. OK, so you go through the gateway, uh, you become Marilyn Monroe. She said it's literally like a fairy godmother came in and she showed me a fairy godmother. And she's just showing me like the little, you know, the little one twinkle, twinkle, like star, starstruck. She said I was starstruck by so many of the people that I met, so many of the big names, people I never thought I would meet. Um, starstruck by the lights, starstruck. Uh, she showed me the lighting on film sets and photo shoots and I'm now being shown you know those old-fashioned cameras where they used to there used to be like a big um a big burst of light uh, where, when the print got exposed uh, and and the old, maybe it still is, the old cameras, Holly, Holly weird cameras, she's saying, uh, you know, on sort of like the big, is it gurneys or whatever? And the lights coming on, lights, action, all of that. It's like, oh my God, it's me and I'm here. And, you know, oh, and now I've got to do it. And she's saying, she found she could naturally do it. She, she naturally could act. It was just something that she could do. She didn't, um, it doesn't feel like she was studying books, learning how to be an actress or going to schools to learn to be an actress. It's just like she did it. And then she said there was a lot of jealousy that came with it because people were like, how can you just turn up on set and do it? And she said, I just did it because I was loving it. I was, I was, it, I, I, there's an energy here of I was just exploring. I was having this most extraordinary adventure. So I would absolutely step into a part and become it and be it. 
And she, she's also shown me books and she's, that's why she loved books and she loved poetry and she loved literature because she says it's the same thing. You just go into a book, you sink into a character, you sink into a time, you sink into another world. And she said, there's nothing wrong with that. Life is here to be explored and to have as many adventures as you can. Being an actress allows you that. Being a singer allows you that. Uh, being a model allows you that. All of this type of stuff. So really just get this very positive energy from her. Uh, okay. So how can people connect to you? So I've mentioned a few of them. Uh, the ones that she's given to me off camera, I'll tell you, and then we'll ask her again. She's uh, um, talking about the rose gold energy. Okay, the rose gold ray. So talk to me a little bit about the rose gold ray. Now I do have a rose gold spray. I will just show you that. As I say, it's the Stella Gateway spray. Can you see the colors of the bottle? Very, very beautiful. So rose gold she's giving me as a way to connect into her. So what it does is it opens up your Stella Gateway that allows in the possibility of magic of what she's saying of lights camera action in terms of your life she's saying so many people she can see are just going through the motions they're just living their life they're stuck in their story they're stuck in that i'm this person that i have to do this that i have to behave like that that you know they're waiting for their life to begin she's saying lights camera action come on let's do this <laughs> let's do this let's have fun let's bring it on so there's all of that coming in with the rose gold ray, but it's also coming in a very high vibrational, uh, it's a very high vibrational energy. Uh, I'm being shown Fred Astaire now uh, for some reason. I'm being shown him dancing with his top hat and his um, tails and his uh, stick that he used to, his baton that he used to have. I'm being shown Laurel and Hardy. Uh, I'm being shown a lot of the greats uh, of her era or before her era or after her era. People that in inspire basically people that are different people that are original the rose gold energy seems to bring through this spark of originality it reminds you that who you are that you're the, this divine soul that is so much more than you think you are and that we get stuck in when we have you know responsibilities duties got to do this got to put the bin out all of that you know uh, she's making me laugh because she's showing me she's showing me herself putting the bin out, but she's got these ridiculous big pink fluffy uh, slippers on with little diamante on the top. <laughs> all of that. So rose gold definitely feels alive. It feels fun. It feels full of beauty and grace. And that Fred Astaire energy of just dance, you know, just dance. She showed me the energy of movement. Uh, I feel like she liked to dance. She liked to move. I feel as though when she was in her own home, in her own bedroom, just herself, she would just, she just had an innate understanding of her body, of moving, of knowing when it felt stiff, when it felt sore, just to move it. Um, very fluid, very Venusian energy, really, really lovely. So movement is another way that you can connect with her as well. Uh, the vesica Pisces that I was talking about earlier, um, this symbol of the two circles overlapping is very much linked into a divine feminine energy. Um, but that is something where it's almost as though it's a symbol that just reminds you that you are so much greater than you think you are, that the magic is in the overlapped you know, bit, the eye, that what can you create when you bring in different aspects of your personality and also the divine spark as well, okay? Um, other ways to connect, we could say Chanel number no. five, couldn't we? Perfume, uh, scent, uh, definitely roses. I bought these roses specially for Marilyn and they felt very appropriate. She really wanted pink roses, um, but I put some white ones in there as well. Um, song, I mean, I will just read the words to Candle in the Wind because again, it's a, a deepening. Elton John is definitely a live heart squad. I'm glad he's still here with us. 
Elton John is absolutely a member of the Living Heart Squad. I love him. And he very much links, of course, to Princess Diana. Of course, Elton made Candle in the Wind into a song for Princess Diana when she died as well. Uh, but the original song was dedicated to Norma Jean. So it says, Goodbye, Norma Jean, though I never knew you at all. You had the grace to hold yourself whilst those around you crawled. They crawled out of the woodwork and they whispered into your brain. They set you on the treadmill and they made you change your name. You see, she's shaking her head a bit at me at this, actually. I'm not sure she's actually that happy with the, these words. <laughs> Sorry, Elton. It's a beautiful song and she's very, she's almost like a little bit embarrassed because she says it's a beautiful song and I'm very um, in awe that somebody made it for me. But it, it, this is not the energy of the, the woman, the being that I'm tapped into here. Uh, yes, it was a treadmill, but it's as though she was bright. She she had an awareness of what she probably was getting into. Did she get into deep? Yes, absolutely. Um, but it's just this thing of don't you paint me as a victim. Uh, it says, it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. And I would have liked to known you, but I was just a kid. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever, ever did. Loneliness was tough, the toughest role you've ever played. She agrees with that. Hollywood created a superstar and pain was the price you paid. Even when you died, oh, the press still hounded you. All the papers had to say was that Marilyn was found in the nude. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. Okay, she's saying um, there's a truth to never knowing who to cling to. Um, making, not being consistent. <laughs> okay, she's become a little bit um, protected at this point. Still open. She's, she's very, very open, you see. Very, very open. So I'm just noticing a slight change in her energy when we start to talk about her relationships with men. Um, guarded would be a better word rather than protected. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm being, sh what she's saying is that there's beauty in being alone, uh, to not jump from pillar to post, to not jump into a relationship just because another one has finished, uh, to not have to need a partner on your arm. Uh, she says there was a degree of expectation in Hollywood that there should be, um, and she's now just showing me this. I can really feel this force of pressure on my chest, which is quite overwhelming. The, uh, the degree of attention that she had from men and very powerful men um, was overwhelming. We know this, but to experience it as she experienced it, it's literally like lock the door, put the shutters on, go and hide in a closet to get away from it. It was incessant. She showed me the energy of Kennedy. Um, I can't remember which Kennedy it was she was involved with, or there's two of them, but relentlessness of phone calls, of pressure. Um, who was I to say no? Um, getting herself into situations where she sort of knew it probably wasn't going to end very well, but sort of did it anyway. Uh, this is what she this is what she means about not being a victim because she wants to take accountability and responsibility for the situations and scrapes she got herself into. Um, the Kennedy situation feels just like pressure, pressure, pressure. Who am I to turn down a president? Who am I to not turn up? Who am I to not you know? Who am I to say no? But she said I should have said no to more. And some of the men that she married. Um, feels as though they were part of the barricade. They, I mean, not to say she didn't love them, that she wasn't attracted to them, particularly particularly intellectually. Um, was it Arthur Miller in particular? I'm picking up here. But it's more that they were a barricade to help keep that world out. And the world was these salivating men. She's showing me them like wolves. Now, I'm bringing, um, she's showing me uh, Joan Collins here, who I did also want to mention anyway, because Joan, bless her, is still alive. Big fan of Joan Collins. She'd be turning up in her sparkles and still does in her 90s. Brilliant for her. But I think it was 
Joan said Marilyn warned her about the wolves in Hollyweird. And she's shown me these wolves now. And it's like, it's like, it's really disgusting. But it's like salivating. It's like saliva dripping from them because they just wanted to devour her, wanted to have her. And so some of the relationships she had with men were to protect her, to keep them out. It's as though if I had a husband, they would back off, except they didn't, she says. They didn't. They didn't respect the vows that I'd taken. And maybe I didn't respect the vows either. Um, but there was definitely a line of defence with the marriages that she had. Um, but also, I don't know how many times she was married, but it feels as though at soul level, she knew that she wasn't going to be here for that long uh, because she's an advanced soul. She knew when she came in this time, she wasn't going to be the old woman in, in her 90s. She, she was going to die young subconsciously she knew that, the Neptunian energy. And so it's as though I need to experience as much of life as I possibly can. So if there's a husband who's not working, I need to move on to the next. Or if there's a boyfriend that's not working, I need to move on to the next. But definitely I just feel like being devoured by this masculine energy. Um, and so what would your message be to women now who are experiencing that to a degree? Because we're still living in this sexualized world of demands and blah, blah, blah. So what would you say about that, Marilyn? Let's just ask her about that again. Let's just spray the Marilyn again, Marilyn spray. So um, coping with attention, coping with unwanted attention, coping with all of that your message to um, the divine feminine, I want to say. She says, the divine feminine is to be prized. The divine feminine is a prize. You should see yourself as a prize, not a trophy. She says, many uh, men and partners um, view women as trophies. Um, you are not a trophy. Um, you are a prize, not a trophy. Do you understand the difference, she's saying? Um, a man who sees you as the biggest prize in his life is a man who truly understands and respects that he's got the golden chalice, that he's won the lottery, that he is lucky to have that, that he needs to honour it, honour her, sorry, honour her, look after her, cherish her, protect her, um, support her in the same way that she should her man. Uh, but to be a trophy is something else because a trophy is something that is just put on a dusty shelf or wheeled out on a special occasion or shown off. Um, it, it's and it's coming from a place of ego uh, rather than the heart. So remember that you are the prized jewel, divine feminine energy. Remember you are the prized jewel. You are the golden chalice. Um, only a select few are allowed to drink from that cup. Do not give yourselves away. Do not. Do not. Do not give yourselves away. Do not undersell yourselves. Step into your worth. Step into your beauty. Step into your essence. Realizing how unique it is. Your scent is unique. Your fingerprint is unique. Your voice is unique. The way you see life is unique. You are unique. Be with someone that sees that, that values that. And that is a high bar, is it not? Which is why often we settle for less. Do not settle for less. I 
keep being shown by her the analogy. You see, I never had a sister. I've got a brother who I love very much, but I never grew up with a sister. I often wonder what it would like to, f to have a sister. She's very sisterly. You see, the thing about women is women can be very bitchy to towards each other. Women can be very competitive. Sisters can be very competitive. Um, women often do not have other women's backs. I've learned that, unfortunately, the hard way in business as well. The people I've always been betrayed by have been women. Uh, the energy of sisterhood is the countenance to that. Marilyn has a sisterhood energy about her. And it's so interesting that she does because she's presented as this woman over the years, which is just this sex symbol for men, for people that find her attractive. But there's this sisterhood energy with her. She's really wanted to bring out qualities within women that empower women. Now, I want to go back to why I actually asked my daughter, why are you interested in Marilyn Monroe before I did this video? Because I wanted to understand why a 17 year old loves her so, why her shelves are stacked with beautiful books of Marilyn, <laughs> etc. you know? Um, why Marilyn? What? Why? You know, over and above the fact she's beautiful. And yeah, Sophie said, well, yes, she's beautiful, but it wasn't really about that. I just wrote down what she said. She said, a lot of young women, but this isn't just young women, it's not even just women, it's men. It's the divine feminine aspect within you men. Many of us feel misunderstood. She said she represents people that feel misunderstood that maybe have felt boxed in to be a certain way. But this thing about feeling misunderstood. Also the fact that she represents metamorphosis, transformation, that the caterpillar can turn into the butterfly, the ugly duckling can turn into the swan, although she was always beautiful really. But this energy of metamorphosis, and I would also say in death as well, she is not that body wheeled out, you know, after she had died, unrecognisable, God knows what happened to her, all the rest of it, none of that. She's not that. She is this extraordinary spirit that's still alive in the 21st century and always will be. It's just the ultimate expression of transformation and metamorphosis, the butterfly. But yeah, this thing about feeling um, misunderstood Marilyn seems to capture that, that there was so much more to her than just the pretty face. And the other thing Sophie said was about, yeah, this aspect of her, of her intellect, of her brains, of her IQ, of her depth, of her depth. Um, it struck me that Marilyn would be, in terms of an animal, she'd be like the swan. She would be the graceful swan on the surface, which is what you see, but beneath it, you're paddling furiously. <laughs> um, I'll, talk, I'll ask her a little bit in the moment about intellect and brains. But I think I will just read you a page from this book, one of her poems, letters. Uh, many of them are, some of them are scribbled out, you know, she obviously is somebody that goes back over things over and over again. Um, this is quite interesting. I've just turned to page 5, 25. It says, this is something she's written in a notebook. Remember, she's a star seed, Venusian star seed, ahead of her time. She says, I can't really stand human beings sometimes. I know they all have their problems as I have mine, but I'm really too tired for it. Trying to understand making allowances, seeing certain things that just weary me. How many of us resonate with that? That is like an old, that is an old soul talking. It's like someone that's not judging it, just witnessing it. And it's like, are human beings still behaving like that? Are they still doing that? <laughs> you know? Stones on the walk, every colour there is. I stare down at you like horizon. The space, the air 
is between us beckoning, and I am many stories up, my feet frightened as I grasp towards you. So if you wanted to show wanted me to show you a photograph of her that she particularly loves, which is in this book. Look at that. How beautiful, isn't it? And I think it just captures energy, actually. Captures an essence, doesn't it, of somebody that is so much deeper. Right. Um, I'm not going to go on for too much longer because the video is getting long and this is only going to be the first video we do with her. Um, I definitely feel she wants to help people who are deep thinkers, people who are poets, people who are actors, obviously, actresses, people that are writers, anybody that basically is trying to truly express themselves in this lifetime and that feel misunderstood. She definitely feels as though she's, yeah, she's there for young girls growing up, um, older girls like me, <laughs> all of that. But let's just ask about um, intellect. Intellect. Interestingly, I will just say as a medium, uh, before I came on camera, I just pulled a card just to say, you know, you're here. I knew she was, but I just part of my ritual. And this is the card that came up. The, the deck is the song of Gaia. Uh, I'll put the link, well, not a link. I'll tell you who did it below. But it's this card. And it says the tree of life. You see, this is pretty deep. This card says the tree of life. It says the meeting of the earth and the sky interconnecting the dimensions. It shows a tree. It shows the chalice, which is what we've been talking about a little bit. Um, it shows a crow. It show, This reminds me of the tree of life itself and the 11th um, Seratof, Darth, which is the void. And what she was saying to me in this card is there's another way in terms of mediums can work when they connect into spirits such as me, which is use the tree of life. Okay, use the tree of life as a symbol um, or as a, um, not a symbol, a, a blueprint, basically. Sorry, I don't know why my camera, I think it's just because I've got so many nice things, hopefully, to look at, including all these beautiful pictures of Marilyn. It doesn't know where to put its, where to put its attention. But anyway, the tree of life has got this hidden sphere, number 11. And she's saying that's a place where you can tune in if, via meditation to connect to me also. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's just deep. It's like it's it's um, it's not surface level stuff. It's like, yeah, work with the tree of life, work with sphere number 11, meet me there <laughs> where the crow and the tree are, where the universe is, where I am. OK, anyhow, let's just uh, any final uh, thoughts, Marilyn? for this video. She says, it's been so nice to talk to you. It's been so nice to talk to you. It's been so nice to be seen. It's been so nice to be seen in terms of who I was, who I am as a spirit, what I will always be. Um, I still get this sense of reincarnation. She's, she is highly evolved, but if she came back, it would be very much below the radar no one would ever know it was her and it's definitely the mother she'd come back as the mother um she's she's laughing <coughs> she's saying i could even come back as a surrogate it, literally that is the energy i'm feeling as though she just wants to birth children um and it's almost like yeah i'd love to birth them for myself but also she's seeing the need of women out there who can't birth uh, naturally, who can't conceive naturally. And there's definitely, she's bringing in the energy of surrogacy um, as uh, she's saying, these women are earth mothers. These women are, many of them are doing it for absolutely the right reasons. Um, she's saying, sure, there will be some that maybe just do it for money, but she's shown me a group of surrogates that are doing it out of sheer love, for their fellow sisters. So back to the energy of sisterhood, uh, doing it for your sister um, that lives in a different town, a different place, uh, and sister in the wider sense of the word as well. Being able to give to a woman something that that woman can't give to herself is such a beautiful thing, she's saying, is such a beautiful thing. Um, so that's interesting, showing me surrogacy. 
Okay, anything else, Marilyn, before we uh, finish today? She's saying, please thanks, Sophie. <laughs> She's saying, I have a beautiful child. She says, you have two beautiful children, which I do. Yeah, two beautiful girls. She's very, you see, this is what I mean. She's very girly, girly. She's very observant. She's very, um, she's very aware of the feminine principle, which is about giving and also receiving. She knows how important it is to receive genuine, authentic compliments she says, I, in my life as Marilyn in particular, I had many that were fake that would tell me what they thought I wanted to hear. Uh, she says, Hollywood is full of yes men and yes women. And the curse of celebrity is that you get surrounded by yes people. It takes a strength to learn to say no. But she's saying it's full of people who just flatter you, but there's no depth to their flattery. She's saying when you flatter somebody, mean it or don't say it at all. When you notice something about somebody's life, when you notice something about somebody's um, appearance or ability, say it and mean it or do not say it at all. She's saying there's a shallowness to society. There's a shallowness to people who will comment on something, but it's as though the words are coming out and although they think they mean it, the words are not tied to their heart. Um, she's wanting us to connect into our heart energy so that what comes out of our mouth, what we speak, is genuine, is authentic, it's coming from the right place. That when I say, you look beautiful today, I mean, you look beautiful today. And she said, then the gift also shouldn't be rejected. She says, uh, learn to accept the compliment, uh, to actually take the compliment into your heart for it to nourish you rather than just to reject it. Okay. Um, to give compliments to your children, to, uh, to, 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 to compliment each other more. She's saying the world right now, from what I can see looking in, is full of insults. She's saying it's full of insults and ego. And she says, imagine what the world would be like if it was full of uh, compliments and thanks and gratitude and blessings and that would bring so much more beauty, would it not? She keeps coming back to beauty. And beauty is, um, it's not about, you know, appearance and skin, although you can appreciate somebody being beautiful, or you can appreciate a sculpture that's beautiful or a tree that's beautiful. Beauty is deeper. So let's talk about beauty being deeper. Beauty is what stirs your heart. Um, beauty is what moves you. Beauty is what transports you to a different place. Beauty is something that moves you, she keeps telling me. And she's showing me now a music hall and she's showing me, um, it's like a, uh, it feels like opera or something like that, opera or um, I'm now being shown a, an orchestra symphony. Um, but she says beauty is uh, obviously uh, individual to the beholder, uh, what one person will love, another person will hate, but just appreciate what it is that you love and that you're experiencing right now on this earth. Okay, I'm going to pull one final card from this deck that we've got out. Is there anything else to say in this video, please? I think another thing about Marilyn is it's almost as though there's nothing not to really like about her. I don't know anybody that doesn't like Marilyn Monroe. And <laughs> this is the card that's come out. Okay, it probably isn't going to show very well. It says divine feminine. Uh, it says receptivity and magnetism, the one who nurtures. She's just embodying the divine feminine as all the lights comes in to the window. Uh, embody the divine feminine energy. Um, embrace it, see the beauty in it, compliment it, notice it, acknowledge it, 
uh, to get away from this more brutal, hard, uh, old paradigm energy, um, which feels about greed, grasping, control, um, domination, climbing the greasy pole at all costs, competition, jealousy, gossip, manipulation, power. Allow this feminine energy to come in. She says one of the one of the biggest threats that I was was the fact that I embodied it. I embodied it. They didn't know what to do with me. And she's shown me, uh, there's a particular dress that she's shown me herself in. It's red. Um, maybe, it's the, maybe it's the one from this film. It probably is. What's the film? Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Is, is it that film where she's wearing that dress with the red? I'm just seeing her in that red dress. Okay, so it's like a goddess. It's goddess energy. And it's so threatening to what I call the powers that were. It's so threatening to Hollyweird. <laughs> it's so threatening to old society and old earth to really embody that divine feminine principle, that goddess principle, that sisterhood principle, to be strong and sovereign enough to be able to carry different versions of the divine feminine within yourself as well. Because Norma Jean was divine feminine energy. Marilyn Monroe was divine feminine energy. You know, it can't be boxed in. It can't be labeled that this is what it looks like. It just is. It's like the sun. She is like the sun. And I know the sun is typically masculine energy, but, you know, She's, she's a th she was a threat to that. She was a threat to the old, dominating, masculine energy of old. Um, she just, she, she just, sun, she just, sun, I can't speak. She does, she, I can't speak, guys. She just shines like the sun. Okay. She just, she, <laughs> oh, okay, I realise why I'm doing it. She had a speech impediment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sophie did remind me of that, actually. But yes, yeah, she had a speech impediment, Marilyn Monroe. I believe she used to stutter over her words, like I just have, from nowhere. Uh, I think the way that she sang Happy Birthday to the president, very breathlessly, she, she spoke in a way that was quite... Her, she's saying, my voice masked my impediment. Uh, it's true of many people. I, I know this for a fact um, that some people who have speech impediments, they will mask it by either uh, speaking slower or higher or in clipped, clipped words, shorter sentences. The, there's a breathlessness with her. But actually, it came from her being able to be able, she wasn't able to, but I'm doing it again, the command of her speech didn't always come naturally to her. She's saying, again, this is where literature and poetry, and she says, show, show them the book, Amanda. Okay, so if I open this book at any of these pages, um, she would write and she would scribble things out. She was always scribbling things out, putting different words in. Um, it, wasn't fl it didn't flow that well. It's like there were many different attempts at it, but she still got she still got it done. What's this one? Okay, look at this one. I'm going to read you what it says on this page. It says, "Oh yes, Mr. Oxley is always compl." Oh, I can't believe this. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, it's such a lovely confirmation as well that she's here, even though I know she is. Page 187, if you've got this book. We're talking about speech. I've opened it on this page. Oh, yes, Mr. Oxley is always complaining about my punctuation, so I'm careful to get here before 9am. Mr. Oxley is on telephone. Won't you sit down? Loose letting go. Voice starts back theatre. Don't and then it says, don't be nervous, Marilyn. You are doing swell and you look wonderful. Um, so I don't know. It's just lots of pages with scribbles and musings and thoughts. And there's definitely something here about her speech. 
So I'm going to leave it here for today because I think that's a good introduction. We've gone 133 and 33 seconds as I said that. Um, I will close it out now. I thank her very much for being here. I look forward to speaking to her again. Do let me know if you enjoyed this video. I hope you did. And uh, take great care. Thank you very much, Marilyn. I just let, allow her now to go. She feels like she's going straight off to see the ponies in the new forest. She also wants to see the river. There's a river near where I live. She wants to go there. And there's also a place near me which is quite high. <coughs> and she says, I want to go there and I want to let out a loud scream, stroke cry. But it's a cry for all the women who have been misunderstood, misrepresented, um, that are not seen. She said, let us all just let out this primal cry scream and she said there's a huge release this Gemini full moon um, stand in your sovereignty stand in your power and be like that volcano that will be noticed <laughs> okay thanks very much everybody see you soon bye bye for now please like the video if you have enjoyed it gets it out to more people okay bye bye <laughs>